This is Joyce, back again. A little something different this time, since it's just the day after Thanksgiving that I'm recording this. And I thought I'd introduce you to something else that strikes my passion, and that's art. Civilization doesn't exist without art. And a couple of years ago, I was asked to write about my passion for art, any kind of column I wanted, for The Artful Mind, which is located in the Berkshires. And it was then that I was introduced to the artist Robert Forte. He and I became really great friends. At the time, I could not purchase his art. It was too dark, too angry. Um, that's not me. However, Robert went on a journey of self-discovery, and the process is incredible, and you'll see it when you see his art. He is now beautiful and in color and looks at people as people and doesn't hide from emotions. Nothing is bottled up. And so I hope that you'll enjoy his art, which is a, an intellectual expression as well as an emotional one and a colorful one, as much as I do. Thank you. And I'll let the interview begin. Hi, I'm with Robert Forte, uh, who has just... Uh, made the most amazing transformation in art. We know each other at least two years, and I've admired his work, and I've especially admired the piece that I bought, and over the last year, I knew that Bob had made a, a personal journey to get to this point. So, Bob, can you tell us a little about yourself, please? Well, I think my, um, my impetus for the uh, present uh, art is, goes all the way back to my childhood. I, <laughs> I don't want to call myself a prodigy, but I started, um, I started drawing when I was seven. Really? Oh, yes. And what I was doing was I was copying, uh, pro prodigiously copying everything that I could get my hands on. And uh, I graduated from um, pencil to crayon. Uh, the transition from crayon to charcoal was the most difficult one. That happened around age nine. And um, I struggled with that and uh, conquered. Um, and uh, won a number of TV contests. Uh, and my love for art just seemed to be um, ingrained. So I um, went to music and art high school and I uh, had a great time there, uh, at which point it became clear to my parents that despite my love of art, um, I needed to have a career. And from there I went to Columbia College and it was a wonderful eye-opening experience and from there to Harvard Law School and then my career in law um, started and um, I sort of put um, art all the way in the back of my head, um, not really knowing when or where it would come out again, but it did. Um, after 33 years of practice, um, I decided that um, maybe I want to change my life a bit. And so while I was working, I went uh, to a studio to draw the model and um, which I think is an absolute essential for anyone who's striving to be um, a realistic or semi-realistic painter or, or even, even an abstract painter. Um, uh, we don't remember that some of the great artists um, were extraordinary draftsmen, even though their later work built upon that expertise. Um, I took that very seriously and I, I loved so much, so many of the um, masters um, that I did that for three years, 
And I was doing that while I was working, um, doing that at night. And um, when I had gotten to the point where I was going to retire, I at least had a foundation on which to build. Um, the transition from law to art has been just psychologically extraordinarily difficult. Um, I could go into that a bit more. Why, why was that? Why would it be difficult? Uh, the law is built on logic. It's built on, um, uh, on reasoning, on, on rules um, to some extent. There is certainly creativity built in there. I was an appellate attorney, so I was uh, writing briefs. And uh, subsequently, toward the end of later in my career, I was supervising attorneys who were writing briefs. Uh, but we all knew when a brief was good. We all knew when it was well reasoned. We knew if we went before a court of law that we generally had an idea of where the questions were going to go and how we would have to respond to them because we would have been had a moot court uh, beforehand. Um, in art. Um, I felt, well, totally lost because there are no standards, essentially. Um, there are rising stars in the art world because someone decides that they're wonderful and um, those rising stars can peter out uh, because then someone decides that they're not so wonderful. <laughs> um, and I found it particularly difficult to find my work um, uh, treated nonchalantly, I, I guess is the best way to describe it, by people who generally don't know anything about art and who simply walk around and then walk out. They don't ask any questions. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is not a lawyer's experience. You are asked a lot of questions when you're a lawyer. Um, you have definite um, I, ideas, uh, people have ideas about how creative you are in making an, an argument within the boundaries of law. Um, and there are no boundaries in art, and um, that is an extraordinarily different mindset, and it's one that I had tremendous difficulty with, maybe still do, but I I'm, I'm no longer feel it personally as when I first started out in, in, in exhibiting, which I, I started exhibiting six years ago. I um, see. And that was up in, the, up in the Berkshires, where I have a home and, and have my studio. And um, the other difficulty was psychological in that um, my life as a lawyer was full-time, uh, with the crazy hours, of course, working weekends and having the, um, I want to say, admiration of my colleagues, um, and then suddenly to find that I am no, <laughs> I have no longer any real status um, in the art world. Um, if there is a bottom of the rung, I'm bottom of the ladder, I'm on that rung. Um, and um, that was uh, tremendously difficult for me. Um, How long would you say it's taken before to get recognition, or do you really feel you haven't gotten the recognition uh, yet? And does it matter? Well, no, those are both excellent questions. Um, it's hard to determine what recognition I presently have. Um, uh, I don't think it's the recognition that um, established artists have who have been doing this all their lives. I think one of the problems about getting more recognition is that I don't have the resume to support it. Um, I don't have um, art schools, I don't have art degrees in my background, and I think when someone comes in and um, looks at art, either to buy or to review, they're looking at someone who they think is someone who has done this all their lives. So to that extent, um, I do not have uh, the rec that sort of recognition, and I probably never will. Um, Does it matter? Uh, it, uh, 
No, it, yes, and of course, it, of course it matters, but um, does, it, does, it, um, does it matter so much that it would change my way of, of doing things? Um, I don't think so. I think actually that when I started out exhibiting here in the Atlantic Gallery, um, which was uh, two, three years ago, um, my, my first solo show was in October of, of 17, and it was a very introverted show. I went through a period where I really needed to explore what was internal and uh, bring that out on my canvases. Um, and I don't think that uh, in, in many instances, the more, the more personal it got, the, the less people were interested. Um, since then, I have changed quite a bit. I've gone past that period. I thought, I think, and still do, that it was necessary to go through. Um, now my work builds on that. It's it's built on f form, simplified form, color, but a, a psychological complexity under the surface, which is not a personal one, but is I think one that challenges the mind, which I think is based on my art, my legal background, where I, I think, I. I I, I like abs abstract, but I don't find any any intellectual um, interest in it. And I think that is one of the elements of my paintings, that there is an, an, an intellectual component. Um, but um, I think now that I've done that, I've had this journey, that um, I could now go back to my studio and, and just paint and not worry about what people like, what people don't like, whether or not I'll have another solo show or not. Um, it, I don't think it will matter anymore because I know that what I'm doing is self-fulfilling. Um, and when I go to my easel, I'm excited. If I'm not excited about it, I don't go to the easel because then it's not worth it. And what would you give then to young people, what kind of advice if they're just starting out and, and they have a passion for painting, but they also know they too have to make a living, what would you say? I would have no way of, of answering that. Um, it's, uh, it's a question of, of it's, a, it's an individual question that each, each person has to answer. Some people have a very strong concept uh, when they're young about what they want to do with their lives. Um, some people don't. Um, some people are pressured in various ways to do things that they may not otherwise do. Um, uh, again, it, it's something that you have to go through. Um, whichever way you go, you you are going to experiment and you're going to come out one way or another um, as you get older. So I, I, I don't know. I, I felt pressured to go into a profession, um, but once I was in it, I was totally gratified by the profession. I, I, uh, I, I don't know that I could have possibly enjoyed my life um, as much had I simply uh, left music and art high school and then gone into a, a, an art school such as Cooper Union or, or, or Pratt, um, I would have missed so much. Um, and that I would never have known unless until I did what I did. And now I have not only the passion for the art, but now I have the resources to do it and not worry about whether or not something is bought or, or not because I don't financially need it. So I think to that extent, it's worked out fairly well. And I, I would have to agree. <laughs> and, and I do like the, uh, the intellectual component. And I guess the color and the intellectual component is what drew me to purchase that art for my birthday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the assault on diversity, well, which I, I love. Well, I have someone who was here yesterday who wrote in Thank the guest you. book that she was amazed by the way I could create mood through color and form. Um, and um, I thought that was a very perceptive comment. And I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you, definitely. You do. 
Yeah, I, as I look around the paintings here today, I can see it and I will give uh, uh, my audience a view of some of the art that you have in the gallery today. And it's been a pleasure and it is my treat for everyone uh, since it'll be right after Thanksgiving and uh, right after my birthday. So everyone will be able to see the birthday present I gave myself <laughs> from Robert Forte. Thank you so much for being with me and thank you for creating such beautiful art. <laughs> thank you. I certainly hope you enjoyed the interview as much as I did. I've certainly enjoyed being with Bob and watching the metamorphosis in his art. And I thought that today we needed a rest from politics so that we could clear our mind and see things that are hopeful and that are positive with our world and understand that art is part of all of us. That when you view art, it really makes you better to see life itself. So this is Joyce wishing you a happy and a healthy Thanksgiving season. You can contact me at the voice of Joyce at earthlink.net or the voice of Joyce.me. And I'm happy to hear from you and happy to take any comments you might have. Have a great day. See you next week.